In describing the qualitative behavior of nonlinear dynamical systems, we need to introduce one more type of feature that can be seen on the phase plane portrait and that governs its dynamics, and that is a limit cycle. And this is a purely nonlinear uh, phenomenon, and it is the presence of an isolated periodic solution in the phase plane. Um, and so a periodic solution just means that um, there's a period, capital T, for which the state returns back to its original uh, its state uh, every t uh, amounts of time. And so what this is saying is that x, the state at, at a time x, uh, at a time t is equal to the state of the time t plus this period. And so that would happen after one period, after two periods, and so on. And that is essentially just the amount of time it takes to loop around this structure. And, um, and so typically, in general, uh, the limit cycle is, uh, is isolated, which means that uh, if you're slightly off of the limit cycle, that, that is no longer a periodic solution. It's no longer part of a periodic solution. Um, and so that means that there's going to be some behavior inside and some behavior outside. And so what we're going to do next is really try to talk about um, leveraging a couple different observations, some new, as well as some that stem from the idea that these streamlines uh, can't cross. And so that restricts the, the behavior. So something that starts on a trajectory like this essentially has to stay inside if there's this periodic orbit. Um, you might be tempted to compare this to centers uh, of linear systems, but the, the thing that they don't satisfy is that they're not isolated. So here, arbitrarily close to another uh, periodic orbit is another periodic orbit that loops right around, uh, doesn't touch uh, that should be a perfect circle, and and so there's another one. So you can find uh, any any arbitrary distance away from one of the others, you can find another periodic orbit. So that does not satisfy the criterion of a limit cycle. To see how a limit cycle uh, can be used to quantify the um, the dynamics of a differential equation, we can take a look at the Van der Poel equation. So the Van der Poel equation is this one uh, equation that's a generalization of the simple harmonic oscillator, such that this term introduces a nonlinear term um, where the derivative plays a part, as well as um, the variable x, as well as this, um, this parameter mu. And so if mu is equal to zero, that just gets us right back to the simple harmonic oscillator with no, without damping. Um, but uh, this Van der Poel uh, equation uh, has some very interesting characteristics, including a limit cycle. And so um, I'll leave it you, to you to check that if we if we do the um, state space expansion, which means taking this um, second order differential equation and converting into a system of differential equations, that we get this form. So again, I pause the video and, and try your hand at that if that's not clear to you. Um, and then what we're going to be interested in doing is quantifying what the equilibria are of this system. And so again, go ahead and pause the video to convince yourself that the only place for x dot to be zero is just when x is equal to zero. So x1 and x2 are both zero. And so around that particular equilibria, we find the Jacobian, we take the derivative, uh, so we uh, we can find the, the general Jacobian. So the general Jacobian is going to be the derivative of this first function with respect to, to x1, which is 0, derivative with respect to x2, which is 1. The derivative of this thing with respect to x1 gets a little messy, but we have, for example, minus 1. And then you're going to have two terms, one with this x1 squared. So that's going to give you a minus 2 mu x2 uh, x1. Uh, and then uh, you're going to get, uh, so let me move this over, that's 1. And then the derivative with respect to x2 gives you this term mu times 1 minus x1 squared. So that's the general Jacobian, and then we simplify that when x1 and x2 are both zero, and so that gives us this, this uh, Jacobian at the origin. 
And then we're interested in quantifying what the, uh, the eigenvalues are. And so if we solve for those, again, using um, the determinant of a minus lambda i, and setting that equal to zero, we find that lambda has to be these values. And so what's important here and what we're going to explore is the fact that this mu is going to play a role, this coefficient mu is going to play a role into what kind of dynamics we see around this uh, linearized equilibrium. So we said these are the eigenvalues of this van der Poel dynamic system. And so they're going to depend on um, the value mu. And so what we can do is we can look at what mu does to the eigenvalues. So if mu is equal to zero, then the real part is zero. And that gives us a center, actually, because um, mu makes this discriminant uh, negative. And so in that case, we have the center. And so the linearization looks like that. Um, if mu is positive, uh, in particular, it's between zero and one, then that means that um, this discriminant inside is still going to be negative because we're going to get one half squared minus one uh, and we're going to get a real value out here so that means it's going to be unstable uh, because mu is going to be positive so it's a positive real part with a and it's going to be a complex valued so that means it's going to be a spiral or a focus and it's, uh, it's also going to be unstable um, before that um, if we look at negative mu similarly we're going to again this discriminant is going to be negative so that's going to make it complex valued but in this case mu is going to be negative which makes the real part negative and so that's going to be a stable focus and so again there's a lot of depth here in nonlinear systems analysis and so um, this is just one kind of what's called a bifurcation and a bifurcation refers to essentially how the dynamics how the shape of this um, this linearization uh, uh, and especially the stability changes um, as you change a parameter of the equation and so if this linearization moves from something that is a sink so something a sink means that things are going into the origin so that's uh that's this stable focus into a source and it, and it does that it crosses that that uh, line as it crosses through the center um, then what ends up happening is that you can show then that there must be a periodic solution in the overall uh, dynamics of the van der Poel equation so the nonlinear equation when you take a look at it, its phase portrait there will be a periodic solution so around the origin just around the origin, this went from a stable focus into um, an unstable focus. And by doing that, it crossed through the, the notion of being a center. What that tells us is that somewhere in somewhere, not necessarily at the origin, but somewhere there is a periodic solution, this limit cycle. And, um, and, so, and so that's what it tells us. So beyond that we can we can look at what the van der Poel equation does and it, and it says that it has this stable limb, limit cycle which means that trajectories emanate from the origin and go up out here um, to the limit cycle and then from outside the limit cycle they converge to it but once they actually reach the limit cycle then they stay on that cycle and are periodic so that's what happens when mu is in this range um, so the this bifurcation theory doesn't actually tell us the rest of this but um, the opposite is true when mu is negative which is the fact that it's an unstable uh, limit cycle which means that if you deviate slightly off of this trajectory then you start going into this spiral uh, stable spiral in or that if you leave it slightly off then it does this spiral and heads heads out outwards so looking at what the van der Poel uh, dynamics actually looks like in the in the complex plane uh, looks like this so again the origin is right here and so the, remember the linearizations we were talking about are just around this local neighborhood um, but because as the parameter changes we get this different 
um, we get this specific changing of the linearizations, we can say that somewhere in this in this phase plane there is a periodic orbit. And so what I've done is I've plotted a number of trajectories, one say starting here and moves in along along this way, one that starts here, one that starts here and moves in. And what this is showing is that this cycle, which is along, change my color here, which is along this, this bean shaped um, structure here, these are all um, these points are on the limit cycle and all of these other trajectories converge to it and that uh, all the trajectories inside also converge outward to reach that limit cycle so it's a stable limit cycle so this is for when mu is between 0 and 1